There we go. Okay, 29 minutes. Let's take two. Hi. How did I start my last video? Oh yeah, the last thing I feel like doing is making another video right now. At least, uh, you know, which is sad because I started my YouTube channel because I wanted to make videos, but I wanted to make the kind of videos that I wanted to make, like about projects and restorations and motorcycles and cool stuff, guy stuff, right? which was a little bit on there, and music as well, uh, yeah, and, you know, places I go, like, uh, Rainbow Gathering, and the coast, and the mountains, and whatever, and whatnot, and 9-11, you know, where I'm interviewing the, the police and the firemen at the memorial, and they don't have anything to say, really, and they all kind of, like, avoid me like the plague, <laughs> yeah, that was fun, uh, that was eight years ago, wow, so anyway, uh, one of my other videos recently was about copper chloride and ammonia for my bath water. My bath water, after two baths, had this thick layer on the surface that was a metallic, shiny sheen. And it was mostly gold colored in big areas, and then at angles it would look uh, magenta and uh, magenta and more blue and and uh, different, you know, different colors like that, but all metallic looking. And it was like an ice flow and I scraped some bunch of it up onto a screen. And it was like, there was a ridiculous amount. Well, this bath here, I had a bath in copper chloride and water, and then I added some more water and I, uh, I scrubbed with some 20 mule team Baraxo, like a good handful of it on my head, especially where I have the most build up of the Morgellons fun fungal whatever fiber shit. You know, it's like a liquid plasma under your skin and somehow it extrudes itself in the form of hairs and fibers. But uh, I'm not even going to try and uh, speculate on how that happens. It's just that's what it feels like. That's what it appears to be like. So for now, that's good enough. Um, the antennas are growing out of my sweat ducts. But, uh, I soaked in here with some copper chloride, about the same amount. It was even made with the uh, same copper that was from last time. So. And it was nice and clean and clear. There was no rainbow coloring, no residues or anything in it. And straight water from the well. And the well is clean. Water tastes great here. Um, and then the Brexo was the second bath in here. So, we got the stuff on the surface, but this time it's not so gold, because there's probably because I didn't put any ammonia in it. The ammonia seemed to drop the gold, though. The Brexo seemed to scrub off um, this stuff right here. It's purple and green and yellow green and light blue even. And it looks like ice. That, oh my god, it reformed. <laughs> it sprung back. This is what came out of my skin from two baths. This is the stuff that is burning off when I, when I take the lighter or the candle and I just get an area hot until a vapor rolls off my head. You can't see anything there, you know, except you know when the hairs grow long enough or whatever, the real hairs, you could, it singes them. But uh, you can't see that anything's really burning except for all the smell and the vapor and smoke in the air. But um, that's evidence that it's there and this is what comes out of my skin into clean bath water. Baraxo doesn't leave a, a rainbow sheen like that and neither does my copper chloride because it's made nice and uh, Nice and clean like, right? Psychedelic. Clean, oh, it springs right back. Like the good amalgamated is, right? What if we try and like uh, push it all into one area? 
freaking chunks already. Look at that. Now it's excessively blue green because of the copper chloride I put in here. That, you know, the overtly blue green. That's because there's a whole lot of copper chloride in here. But the copper chloride is in the water and that is tainting, you know, this stuff. But this stuff on the surface is what comes out of my skin. It's what's flammable. I bet you if I were to collect this all up like this and dry it and then put a match to it, it would burn just great. That's a lot. I mean, it feels like it on the back of my neck and the back of my head. There's like that little fat roll thing there. I think everybody has this. And, you know, before I realized it was there, I just had migraine headaches and aches and pains like nobody's business. They were killing me. In my neck, I was completely incapacitated for weeks or a month at a time from neck pain. As long as I burn it off, I don't have neck pain. <laughs> Isn't that strange? <laughs> Are the uh, rules of health and biology and medicine different in an electric universe? I'm beginning to think so. I already know doctors are either dumbasses at best or they're evil pieces of crap and they're lying to your face while they're making you worse. And they know it. So, uh, you know, not everything they say is a lie, but everything they say is misleading at best. And they're, they're reasons for things are just total bullshit. They just make stuff up. Like, we're gonna poison people with this and it's gonna cause uh, these kind of symptoms. What should we do, Doc? Well, we'll make up a new disorder. We'll call it COPD. <laughs> we'll tell everybody they're getting mesothelioma from where they worked. And they won't, I mean, how are you gonna prove you didn't? And if we're handing them money, they're gonna take the money, of course. Oh, yeah, and the pills. Free pills, don't forget about the free pills. Oh, that's right, let's push that health care bill through so that we can get pills to everybody. And phones, everybody needs phones. We, they've got to have a smartphone and pills. They work in conjunction with each other, see? Isn't that trippy looking? Look at this shit. It's flowing back. Yeah. <laughs> Hold it right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to drain the tub. I'm not getting back in there. For fear that it's going to, you know, recombine. It would be like, the host has returned. <laughs> Little nanoparticles fucking start drilling their way into my fucking pores. With my luck, that's what would happen, huh? So yeah, anyway, that's what comes out of my skin. That's why I'm flammable. I need to send a sample of this and have it tested at a lab. And like, ask them, minus copper chloride and Baraxo. <laughs> What's in there? I bet it's aluminum oxide, barium, strontium, and mercury, and arsenic, and fluoride. <laughs> Yummy! Cornerstone of any nutritious breakfast, right? All right, anyway. Oh my God. Well, I've been meaning to make a video about copper. I mean, I mentioned it a lot, but you know, wherever I have an issue, I put copper and it starts to go away. Even if it's under the surface, a, a joint, you know, copper's been known for joints for a long time, but people, there doesn't seem to be a real consensus as to about how it works, the action that it works by. And it does work. It works really well. I saw some stupid video on there where they were trying to debunk magnets and copper. And honestly, I know magnets have to do something at least with the, uh, the frequencies that are going around now, but how you would use them exactly, I don't know. And I don't feel anything either way from the magnets, to tell you the truth even though I want to believe that they do something. But the copper definitely does something. Uh, it kills the fungus and germs and stuff that's in your skin that you don't even know is there. So if it's turning green, it's killing 
it's killing fungus. And the swelling goes down, any aches and pains goes down, the weird Morgellons hair symptoms go down. This one here has been turning my armpit slightly green, like way down there. And guess what? I suddenly have less issues with uh, the glands and the, you know, the pains in my shoulder. And the, the longer I keep it on, the better it gets. Um, if it's wrapped around your joints, your joints are filled with these metals. These metals are conductive antennas for these frequencies. So if you want to lessen your aches and pains or you realize you have more gallons and you want to try and lessen the onslaught of the wireless frequencies and poisoning that's going on that exacerbates the more gallons to the point that you want to kill yourself, put copper around all your joints. It'll kill off the fungus in your skin, which will be a benefit. And one thing about fungus is, and this seems to be no different, this fungus is through your whole body. And you can't readily attack it inside, you know, without taking internal things. You know, iodine internally and different chemicals or things, but this can have problems too. Although iodine's a good one because it has very little side effects and uh, you need it anyway. Yeah, so I think I had Inabraxo out of that list, but anyway, um, fungus. A fungus's strength is that it's hard to get rid of. If any part of it is still alive, it will begin to grow back again, right? And it's very strong and tough. It doesn't die easy. But its strength is also its weakness in that it's all one mind, you know, like the, the nerve center is through the whole fungus, the whole fungus is the mind, the mind is the body, it's all one. Uh, and fungus has a mind, believe that. Um, when you attack it with something on your skin or on your hair, because that's where it's in, or even underneath them. Um, you're doing the same amount of damage, like a D&D &D reference would be, you're doing the same amount of hit points of damage, whether you attack it internally with something you drink or consume or have in your system, or something you do externally, like burn the damn fungus right off of your skin. You burn it off of the, it seems like, oh, I'm only affecting the surface. Well, you're killing off the fungus that's growing in the plasma right under your skin a little bit too. So that's knocking it back and there's less plasma and there's less fungus to grow back again. And it keeps growing, it keeps growing because you can't get to it under there. But every time you do damage to it and weaken it, you weaken the whole thing. Like the knot thing on my, on my, have I got on my toenails and two I got this, this uh, knot over the knuckle and the swollenness on this knuckle uh, on my feet have been reducing a lot in the last few days and the main thing I've been doing is burning the stuff off of my head, especially the back of my head lately. And I just lean back on it and just whoo, and just vaporizes and smokes and I start to, you know, get, get, I can't describe it, you get weird sensations like internal sensations and just, it's, it's weird. If this stuff is connected into your nervous system and it tries to make you feel like something's terribly wrong, sometimes I get nauseous and just, you know, I don't know. But that's short lived. Afterwards, I breathe easier. Usually, some sort of spider webby hair will pop off of my lips or my eyes or my face and float away, and, and I feel better. And somehow, it's reducing the Morgellons effects on my feet. <laughs> by burning it off of my neck. And, well, funguses are all one thing. If I can kill the fungus up here, I'm weakening it down there because funguses are one thing. You know, they're a different type of a living entity than we are. You know, a person, you could you know, like hack their leg with a, with a hatchet or something, like, ah, my leg, and then, you know, they can't get away, so you just hatch it, hatch it, hatch it away on that leg. Pretty soon the leg's useless, it's just it's gone. But the person's still alive, and they, they heal, and say you don't hit them anywhere else, you just keep hacking at that leg, and, and well, 
pretty soon it's like, like quit hacking that dead leg, right? Because you're still alive. Funguses can't do that. You hack at it, its leg, you're hacking at it, its whole body. Kill the fungus is what I'm saying. Alright guys. Look at that shit. Just, that is what is loading up in our skin. It's in the plasma under your skin, which controls your hair growth, like the direction, you know, the pattern that goes to your hair would normally grow in. The curvature, whatever. That's controlled by energy that's flowing in the plasma that's right under your skin. At least that's what Thornton Streeter says. And he seems like he knows what he's talking about. And uh, so you put a conductive metal in there, it's feeding a toxic fungus that's growing an antenna uh, fiber that comes right out your sweat ducts because it's overtaking all your sweat glands too. And, and whoa, you see what I'm saying? It's very simple how it all works together. It's not hard to, it's not hard to see once you see it. If you go to the ducts or any symptom you have of your Morgellons, he will say you have this, you have that, you have another, this, you have all these different disorders and this what the different treatments for it. But really, there are different symptoms emerging because of the onset of the fungus that's taken over everything and is eventually going to turn your hair white and kill you. You'll be a crusty, dried up, old, crispy, barely can move in pain and can't think. That's the future for America. It'd be nice if uh, people, uh, you know, stopped thinking that their children were immune to cancer spray <laughs> and uh, started, you know, giving a shit about their future instead of just paying lip service to it. And you hear all this stuff about kids, everybody's concerned about taking care of the kids in the future, and they, and they ignore the chemtrails, <laughs> and they send them off to bullshit wars in the military and support it. That's the stupidest thing a parent could do. Anyway. Alright, I'm gonna drain that and have a bath. Good night, y'all.